Hey everyone. So a uh, little quick look, little quick lecture on Egypt. Um, I'm going to run through this pretty quickly. Uh, let's talk about the economy of Egypt. Um, again, this is one of the themes that we mentioned a couple days ago, right? Um, understanding each civilization's economy, and um, in this part of the world, the economies were, or at least at this time, the economies of Mesopotamia and Egypt were probably pretty, were pretty similar. Um, both depended on rivers. In Egypt, it was the Nile River. And like um, the Tigris and Euphrates, flooding was very important. It actually helped create this very fertile soil. Um, Egyptians were both pastoralists and farmers, and that's going to develop around 6000 BC. Some of the products that they're going to farm are wheat and barley. Um, they're going to domesticate animals like donkeys and cattle. Uh, they're also going to mine for uh, minerals like copper. Um, and, and, and these minerals are going to be used for jewelry and also tools. And like Mesopotamia, or at least, you know, Samaria and Babylonia, um, a farming surplus is going to lead to growing populations and then growing towns. Um, there was evidence of, 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 I guess you could say, drought or desert, desertification around 5000 BC. I'm not sure if I said that right, but... Basically, that is going to force the Egyptians to really develop better irrigation systems, and they're going to borrow from the Sumerians. There's a little bit of a, of a, of a, of a you know, transfer of technology, and that's another kind of theme. Uh, they also would build canals. Um, they used their own technology. Uh, I'm sorry, they borrowed technology from Sumeria, the, that, that wheel, uh, the plow, um, writing and also bronze making. So um, that's important. That's that's a key theme where you're going to see this um, cultural interaction at times. Uh, as far as trade goes, we talked about the Nile River, how important, or at least not only was it important for farming, it was important for travel, right? So you could move goods and products um, up and down the river, at least probably more down the river, um, from places like the Mediterranean and Mesopotamia and Africa. So we start to see some inter-regional trade. Um, the Egyptians developed uh, boats that had sails. Um, also, from a geographic standpoint, Egypt was not necessarily open to invasion. Um, they were attacked by the Hittites and some other groups, um, and obviously they were overtaken um, We'll learn about how they were overtaken by Alexander. But for the most part, because they were located in a desert, uh, major invasions were not very frequent. All right, let's talk about the political structure, right? This is that theme of state building. Um, Egyptian government was, or at least Egypt was ruled by a pharaoh, also known as God King. You've probably heard of King Tut. Um, the, the, the pharaoh owned all land. Um, even part of, uh, you know, the farmer's crops. Um, kind of a little feudal in a sense, right? Kind of, we'll talk more about feudalism down the road. Uh, that was kind of how it worked in Europe, where kings would own the land, and the farmers would provide, um, you know, would, 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 would work that land and then provide food to the, to the king in return for protection or, or other services. The first king of Egypt was King Menes. That's him on the right, around 3100 B.C., He's actually known for uniting the lower and upper parts of Egypt. Um, you know, I don't, you wouldn't have to know him for the test, but you might see a primary source um, related to Menes. Um, but again, I wouldn't really worry about memorizing who that was. But it just gives us a little framework of, of who some of these pharaohs were. Uh, Egypt was a theocracy. That's a great word to remember. It's this combination, again, of political and religious power. Um, we live in a secular society where government and religion are separate, not the case in Egypt and other places. Egypt was a theocracy. Um, the pharaoh was seen as immortal, um, and the pyramids were built for those pharaohs and their afterlife. Um, again, we go back and you know we think about how um, other groups of people believed in that afterlife. So that's a common theme. Um, bureaucracy, that's another key word. Government, right? So Egypt had a very large government. They had lots of positions, administrators. Uh, governors would rule small districts. Um, government was 
comprised of many officials, uh, ambassadors, and also scribes. Scribes were the, the writers. They would obviously write down, um, you know, the history, and, and they would, um, you know, do a lot of the accounting. Uh, there was civil unrest during um, this first period of Egyptian or the Old Kingdom. Uh, nobles, you know, who owned land uh, started to challenge the authority of the pharaoh. Um, also, there was a drought that led to famine. And eventually, Egypt did split back into lower and upper regions. So again, what I would remember or focus on is the, this bureaucracy and the fact that there was a ruler who kind of controlled all things, and he was godlike. So those are the major points you want to remember. All right, let's talk about the Middle Kingdom. So this is the second period of Egyptian history, around 2040. Um, Mentuhotep was the, the ruler that represented this era. Uh, he began to limit the power of nobles. He wanted to centralize that power or consolidate that power. He reunites Egypt under a, a single centralized government. And, and that's a, a word you're going to hear a lot, centralized government. Basically means that, you know, the power is going to rest in kind of one place with one either person or small group. We have a very centralized government in this country, right? Um, Washington, D.C., the three branches of government. Uh, also, during this time, kings like Mentuhotep, um, they 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 had this idea of of of, of let's uh, being seen as caring and wise, and the reason would be to seek out loyalty. Um, evidence of that would be in the construction of irrigation products, uh, projects, expanding borders, and seeking out resources to help the kingdom. Uh, under his rule, the uh, Egyptians invaded Africa, specifically Nubia, for gold. So that's a, another major theme, this idea of expansion and military conquest. So we see it here in Egypt. Um, on the other side, uh, Egypt was attacked by uh, groups from Syria called the Hyksos. Um, they were known for their uh, chariots and bows. Um, some, some military technology for you right there. And uh, right here you see this is Mentuhotep. Uh, these are the hieroglyphics that are uh, a little different than cuneiform, but symbols that represent sounds, not necessarily Phoenician alphabetic letters. All right, and then the final kingdom, the new kingdom. Um, 1570, uh, it was during this era where the Hyksos were uh, um, defeated and Egypt had regained its its power, um, more expansion into Africa and even Mesopotamia uh, to seek out gold, bronze, and wood. Um, Akhenaten, I, I wouldn't really, you know, worry about remembering him, but uh, it, there was a point in time where he actually promoted monotheism. Uh, that didn't last very long. When Ramses the Great came to power, he restored traditional polytheistic religion. He had one of the longest uh, um, empires, 67 years. He expanded all the way into Southwest Asia. So again, there's that theme of you know, um, state building and, and expansion. Um, this is him right here, Ramses the Great. This is one of his uh, temples, the Temple of Ramses. He was known for building uh, you know, huge statues and temples. Uh, he also had conflict, though, with the Hittites. We're going to talk about the Hittites in a little bit. Um, conflict, not being invaded or overrun. Um, the decline began in 1200 with, again, small invasions by the Libyans, the Assyrians, the Persians, and the Romans. Eventually, it became, or Egypt became part of the Roman Empire. Um, so, um, you know, it was, these invasions were, were fairly limited, but the Romans eventually did gain control of this, this region. Uh, Egypt would not gain independence until the modern era, the, the, the 1900s. So Egypt was always under someone's control. All right, a little bit about the religion. This is culture. Um, that's that theme. Uh, polytheism, uh, they believed in many gods. Uh, the famous god is Ra, the sun god, and um, the people of Egypt um, were known to make statues and idols for Ra and um, offerings and, you know, performing prayers. Uh, the Egyptians believed in the afterlife and 
Um, mummification was a process where obviously the pharaohs were, um, you know, put into these these pyramids or these burial um, burials, and you know, even today we've or archaeologists in the 50s and 60s, I believe, discovered a lot of these mummified pharaohs. Uh, I don't know who this is. I think it's King Tut, actually, I believe. But um, you know, kind of kind of gross, but um, that's that's the preservation right there. Um, the Egyptians believed in this life force known as Ka. Um, they believed that it survived um, even after death, but the, the body had to pre be preserved, hence the, the mummification. The Great Pyramid was one of the great archaeology, uh, the great one of the great engineering feats in history. That's another theme that we want to remember. You have to provide evidence of architecture. And the Great Pyramid is, is a great example of that. Here it is right here. Um, and like the ziggurats, um, these engineering feats are evidence that the government, or there was government, and the government had to come together and organize labor and coordinate that engineering. So always remember that idea. Um, it also is evidence of you know, specialization. You needed different people doing different jobs. Um, and again, this is an example of, of, of religious practice, right? The burial to preserve that life force. Uh, social structure is very similar to other groups. The priests, the ruling families were on top, the, the landowners. In the middle, you had the artisans, uh, the merchants, the traders, um, the farmers, and then on the bottom, you had the slaves. Um, there was equality under the law, unlike, you know, Babylonia. However, social mobility was very limited. Farmers were not moving up in social class. So that's, a, 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 you know, a, um, something that's, that's pretty common in all these, these societies. You're not going to see movement. Uh, let's talk about women. Again, every civilization, we want to focus on the role of women. Um, Egypt was, you know, the role of women was probably more similar to Mesopotamia than Hebrew society. Women had some roles. Um, and Hatshepsut was actually the only female pharaoh. But we see that women did have um, roles in government. Older women actually served as regents when a pharaoh like King Tut was too young to rule. Um, uh, an older woman, maybe a mother or a sister, would actually kind of govern for him until that ruler was old enough. So, you know, Hatshepsut is a great, you know, great fact to remember. Um, you know, just another example of, of, of how women did have some kind of I mean, rights or some kind of political power at times during these early civilizations. Again, these are still patriarchal societies, but women did play some, some roles, um, unlike, um, you know, where we're going to learn a little more about Asia, how women had very limited roles in society. Achievements were very, um, you know, uh, significant. The writing system called hieroglyphics. Uh, this is a civilization was, I, mean, I don't know if it's the first civilization, but they did utilize paper, papyrus. Um, their symbols also represented ideas and sounds. Uh, the Book of the Dead, this was actually, you know, one of the earlier written, I guess, books or, or pieces of writing. This was put into Pharaoh's coffins. Um, their pyramids and their temples are evidence of the great engineering. Uh, some of the great mathematicians um, were emerging, some of the great universities and schools. They also had a number system that was based on 10. Um, the development of obviously fractions and whole numbers that benefited engineers. And also their medical advancements were very significant. They had great knowledge of the human body and their, I guess, their scholars or their um, medical people um, performed amputations. They would set broken bones and use herbs and plants to relieve pain and asthma. I always thought that's an interesting fact to remember. You know, if you think about all these these great innovations, that this is probably the one civilization, you know, during this period that, that really was advanced when it came to, you know, medical um, understanding and knowledge. Uh, I do want to just kind of end with the, the Hittites. Um, you know, you want to remember the Hittites. They were 
um, you know, it's modern day Syria. Uh, they obviously attacked Egypt. Um, they never were successful. Um, they're, they're, they were, um, you know, not a, it was not a huge empire. Um, most of their, um, they, they didn't, they didn't really have a lot of successful conquest, but they were always a threat, but we remember them for their use of iron. Um, unlike the other civilizations, they used iron that was a little stronger and more durable than bronze. They developed a two horse chariot. Um, there were obviously chariots. The Hyksos had chariots, but the Hittites had the two horse chariot. Um, one driver per chariot. So that made made the Hittites a, a, um, a formidable opponent. They were, though, defeated in 1200 BCE by an unknown people. Could have been, you know, uh, um, who knows, actually. It wouldn't be the Phoenicians, but it could have been um, a European group. Um, it's unknown at this point, but a seafaring group. Um Another theme, again, the rise of the military. So whether it was uh, the Egyptians or the Hittites or the Hyksos, we start to see chariot warfare with those domesticated animals, cattle, donkey. Um, I guess this is more of a horse, so I assume that was also, um, you know, the horse was around. Uh, archers and bronze weapons. Assyrians, uh, the Assyrians were... Uh, a group that, again, would be part of modern-day Syria as well. Um, they, too, used iron weapons, and they had professional soldiers, paid soldiers. That's, that's something we're going to see in ancient Rome, um, ancient Greece. Uh, they had a cavalry, and they used machinery to attack towns. They were also known for their cruel treatment and captured people and used them as slaves. So, again, I, I wouldn't really worry about remembering the Hittites or the Assyrians specifically, but just know that there were groups that were using iron weapons, that were, uh, you know, more advanced weaponry, especially the chariots of the um, horse chariot. All right, so that's it for now. I'm going to stop here on Friday. We're going to do the lecture on Asia. All right, enjoy your day, guys.